Autoform presents Process Designer for CATIA, the software application dedicated to dive phases and secondary operation tool design directly embedded in CATIA environment. Hello everybody and welcome to the presentation of Process Designer for CATIA. In this video I'm going to show you how the dive phase methodology carried out by the program will allow you to easily and quickly model the dive surfaces. Once we imported the part in our plan, as a first step of the dive phase design process, we define the position, which means defining the tipping direction. A task-oriented prompt will help us in completing this step. The oriented prompt filters the information must be entered. In this case, tipping point and the angles to set the direction. The live backdraft analysis feature will let us evaluate the input. The scene prompt allows us to define the symmetry define the symmetry plane and then the distance between the two parts. Once done, it is possible to run the live back draft analysis once again, but it is also possible to run the draw depth analysis. As indicated in the process layout, next step is the part preparation. Part preparation consists in closing holes and gaps and in defining flanges. The automatic holes detector finds whole holes in the part it closes them with surfaces that are consistent with the surfaces around the whole cell. To define the flanges, we have to run the dedicated command. Then, firstly, we have to draw the line that limits the flange cell. In this case, we add the first flange, then we select the line that is already in the part, and we stretch this line from side to side. The flanging area is automatically detected. We do the same operation to define the other flange. As a next step, we are going to define the binder. We run the dedicated command that opens this prompt where the user can pick one of the precast type of binder. In our example, we select the LCL from this pull-down menu. And then we enable the side view that helps us to modify the guideline that define the shape of the binder. So let's drag this point down here, this other down here. And since the width has been already defined, the surface is complete and we can move on. Let's hide the binder and we can actually step into the dye phase methodology around which the entire software has been developed. As you will see, this methodology is fully supported by dedicated surfacing tools. As a first task, we define the far boundary surfaces. Some areas of the boundary are directly extrapolated from the part, while some other will actually connect the extrapolated areas. So let's first define the edge of the part we want to work with. Then we have to define the edge that must be extrapolated, and we enter the length directly in the prompt. We will use this command as many times as needed. Now, to connect the surfaces that we have just drawn, a simple extrapolation wouldn't be enough. Therefore, we need a dedicated surfacing tool that allows us to connect the three blue surfaces and define also the transition area. By activating the option fill remaining gaps, the transition area is automatically drawn by the program. The user can always define the limit of the transition area. Once the outer boundary is complete, we can start drawing the addendum wall. So let's turn the binder back on and define the punch opening line directly on it. Once we define the punch opening line, we have to define the 8 directly in the prompt. And the program automatically generates the surface. Now, to fill up the outer boundary and the wall, we create a dedicated command where you have to define first the two surfaces then the spine line, and then the radius directly in the prompt. When we click Preview, the program fillets the two surfaces and makes them as one. The exactly same command can be used to fillet the wall and the binder. So once again we run the command, we select the two surfaces, the spine line, and then in the prompt we enter the radius, in this case 20 mm. We click Preview to evaluate the solution and then we click OK to confirm. Before we move on now, let's check if the support surfaces are good enough for the development of the flange, or we may need to adjust something. 
So we run a dedicated command and the program automatically detects the trim line of the flanges. It is also possible to check the trim angle. The flange development feature takes into account also the thickness of the material. We can add the draw beads now. To add the beads, we created a pretty powerful tool that facilitates the definition of the bead path and the section. When you run the command, you have to select the line and then the type of section of the groove that you want to have, in this case is round. Then we specify that the groove must be embedded in the binder. And on the screen now you can see the results of this operation. We completed the beads, so we can apply the symmetry to what we have drawn so far. We want the program join all surfaces in order to have only one entity as a die that is ready for the next operation. Let me show you now other two features. Just to point out that this program even has been conceived for die phase design only can be used to draw the tools for all secondary operations. For example, just let's define the cam for the trim operation. So what I do, I just run the dedicated command, I have to select uh, the direction and I have to select the trim curve, which is the one that we defined at the beginning. Then let's zoom in a little bit and then I can stretch the line in order to define the width actually of the blades. When I'm happy with that, I go back to the task oriented prompt and I'm going to define the two lengths of the two sides of the tool, in this case like 500 millimeters. And when I click preview, you see that the program draws the, the trim line along the surfaces. You can modify that line at any time and just click preview to update the drawing. Now, if you want to see all the blades and also the angle of the cam, you can just click on the dedicated line. And now, last thing I want to show you is just how to really quickly uh, define the steel for the flange operation. So let's try to define the steel for this flange. What I have to do, I just have to run once again a dedicated command. I have to define the composite guide that actually defines the impact of the steel against the flanges. And then in the prompt that is dedicated to this purpose, I have to specify the height of the, of the tool, which is the width, in this case 25, and which is the radius. And when I click apply down here, you can see the preview of the tool. It is also possible to add, for instance, another control point here, let's put it here in the middle, and we define this width, and then you see that the program creates the tool that I want. This was the last feature that I wanted to show you. Thank you for watching, and I really hope that you found it interesting. Let me just remind you that uh, if you want to learn more about it, you can visit us at www.autoform.com, or you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, LinkedIn, or Xiang. Process Designer for Katia, made by Autoform.